Barbers need to get around money more. And especially yourself. You definitely need to get around money more. This is like one of the cornerstone and the pillars of like how I got to the business where I'm at. There's really like three core reasons why I believe every barber needs to get around more money. Reason number one why every barber needs to get around more money. For me, it starts like when I was the first time I came out to LA. So for those of you who don't know, I grew up in Sacramento, California. Um, Sacramento, California is not known for money. Though. It's actually a very like comfortable town. It's a, it's not a small town, but it's like a, for, for, for a capital of, of a state, it's a very small minded city, right? It's very comfortable. People live there to commute to the Bay Area because they want to save money on rent or on a house or because the cost of living is actually much lower than the Bay Area, which is like, again, two hours away. Hopefully I'm painting the picture to make it really obvious to you that there isn't like that, that next level fuck you money, right? I, I mean, you, you see politicians and the, the idea of money, at least for me, was somebody who was wearing like, again, too, who worked as a state worker or somebody who worked for the government. Um, and that was kind of like the idea of like, oh shit, they're probably pretty important, at least growing up. And this is, this shaped me to believe like, again, too, as a barber, I wasn't going to do shit. As a barber, I didn't mean shit at all. It's like the world because I, all I did was cut hair while the world respected people who are in suits, right? And because everybody around in Sacramento, California, I mean, not, not everybody respected the people like that for fucking sure. But when that's like the people who are like, um, you know, who are you always see me, the governor lives there. And like, you have people like you have the fucking uh, capital uh, the state capital as well too. Right. So you're around all this stuff in downtown Sacramento. And beside outside of that, there's really no money into, unless you go out to like the Rockland areas with El Dorado Hills, which is like really out far. So like for me, I live like closer to downtown, um, Sacramento. And again, too, it's not that much money. I mean, there are things like called the fab forties, but that's like a, a small strip of things. Right now, the first time I came out to LA, <laughs> Um, I remember it was like when I, uh, I think it was like 2016, 2017 and it completely changed my paradigm and it completely blew me away because LA was completely different energetically wise. It was on a different frequency. As soon as we got off the plane, the whole airport was a different frequency than what I was typically used to in Sacramento. And you could pick up on that it, it, like instantly. You smelled it in the air, how driven people were, right? It was a very different aura out here and it was much more, it was almost like a, a very vibrant and fresh feeling for me for the very first time. Like, oh man, I feel like I've, I've been missing this, right? And again, too, I like, for me, I came out to LA. There's not really that many great restaurants in Sacramento. We went out to a really good restaurant, went out to the nightlife, uh, went shopping, and there's none of that in Sacramento. We have a fucking like, uh, what's it called? The Art and Fair Mall, right? And maybe like, you know, some outlets and shit. But you don't really have stuff out here like, like how you have Rodeo in LA. Uh, not like how you have the Beverly Center at all. Like that is not at all what Art and Fair Mall is like, right? And so coming out here was a very different like energy and like it was very vibrant. It was very flashy. And I was like, whoa, I actually really like this. And I got to see things in terms of how people acted out here. How people act with money. What do they look like? What are they actually acting like in the nightlife? How are they using their money, right? How much fun are they having? What are they spending their money on? What do they look like? What do they smell like? They can go up smelling random people, but I think you get what I'm saying. Like, like just, just, just the aura and space of like even some of these stores. What do they, what do they even smell like? They don't smell like cheap. Uh, what is it? For, Forever 21 like cologne, right? There's, there's some, there's some different scents. Like, oh, this, this is different, right? Sunny. It's beautiful. This is so different than the suburb. I mean, again, I grew up in the suburbs. I didn't grow up like a bad place in Sacramento, but it's again too. It's a comfortable place. And again, to me, growing up in suburbs and never getting out is there, there's, I mean, it's, it's the same thing as anybody not getting out of any situation, whether it be you're from the hood or whether it be you're from rich parents. Like if you don't improve on your lifestyle, to, to me, that's complete dog crap uh, because you have the ability to improve. And like some people do have a head start on things and have more resources. Why aren't you using those? Why aren't you using your capabilities and the resources to go ahead and get further ahead of yourself, right? Just because I was still in the suburbs didn't mean shit to me. I, I still felt like I hadn't done, achieved anything in my life. <clears throat> now, when I got back from 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 LA to Sacramento, it, it really, it, it, this is the biggest reason, number one, I think everybody needs to get around more money. It broadens your awareness of what's possible. It brought something that I mentally thought into a physical world for me. I got to physically see these things happen in front of me. I got to see people actually wear Rolexes and watches. I had no fucking clue at the time what the fuck they were. I got to see people buying $10,000 backpacks. I got to see people buying $3,000, $5,000 pairs of jeans, $500 t-shirts, $1,000 t-shirts. And I was like, whoa, this is very different, right? 
and you can, people can go two ways, right? People can be like self-righteous bullshit. Oh man, money ain't everything. But to me, I learned as I use a lesson, like, I've never experienced this before and I like it. Why is this so different? Why have I never been around this before? And then I get back to Sacramento and I start realizing, well, I've never, nobody in my family has ever been around money. Like any, nobody that I know, nobody that I know is on that level of like, of, of not only lifestyle wise, but they can afford lifestyle wise, their money. And also like the, the, the hustle and frequency that that place gave off, meaning LA, which is where I live now. When I came back to Sacramento, I was like, man, I think I've been, I, I, I think I, I know what I'm missing. Like I'm, I'm not in the right space. Like with, with people in Sacramento, I'm not where I would need to be at. These are not my people. I almost self-selected. I'm like, this is not my place. These are not my people. I feel much more at home and feel much more connected when I'm, when overall I'm pursuing a goal, growing and building something. And that whole aura out here in LA gave me that. Until then, I thought the same thing as everybody else. Oh, it's just so, like, people are faking that. That's social media. They don't really have that shit. I was like, whoa, this is actually real. This is not just something made up on like the internet or this isn't just something that like uh, people are just like, you know, buying props for. This is actually physically real. It changed my overall awareness. And I think every barber, you listening, even if you're not a barber, whoever, you need to get around more money. You need to look at where, who, who are the people I'm around and what do they actually do? Because I know for myself, who I was back then, if somebody, if I got on a call with somebody, let's say a mentor, right? The mentor, the mentor said, hey, look, do this program, it's gonna be 50K. I would have shipped bricks. I would have been like, you, in your, nobody has 50K, bro. I don't know I don't know anybody, I don't even know if my, my parents have $50,000, right? Whereas now today, I have no problem dropping that on a, on a full mentorship for a 12 month program, not even a lifetime access, but a 12 month program. I have no problem paying 50K all at once upfront. And it started with this moment of allowing myself to go to places to broaden my awareness. Because once I saw this one place in LA, I mean, like, no, not, there's like one specific place. Once I saw this place, once I saw LA in person for myself, where else do these people hang out at? Where, where else can I find like different things to broaden my awareness? That became my now new North Star. Because I figured out the more I could get around that, the wider my, and the broader my awareness will get, the more real everything will become for me of like, oh, this is actually possible because I've actually physically seen it. It's very hard to believe something when you don't physically see it. And I'm willing to bet if you are a barber and you don't believe that you could charge 200, 500, a thousand bucks for a haircut. It is at the core root belief because you have never seen anybody spend money like that in your life before. The only reason you are not around anybody who has that type of money. You're not around anybody who even is at that level. And that should be a wake up call for you that I need to go ahead and like, what the fuck am I doing with these low level people? I don't want to be around these people. I want to be around people who could do that, right? Get me around that awareness, make that more real for me so that I get more pissed off of like, why don't I have that? Why have I not been exposed to this prior? Why am I now just getting exposed to this? And two, why am I not there yet? And three, great, let's start working on that thing, right? But people want to go ahead and be self-righteous in the barber chain, how money isn't everything, it's not. But guess what? As a man, especially, building and growing something brings fulfillment. As a man, especially in your 20s, hell, even your 30s, hell, even if you're under 20s, you need to put yourself and aim yourself towards a life's mission. You need to start building and creating something and working towards a mission in your life. Otherwise, you will be floating around, overeating, laziness, complacency, women, drugs, alcohol, party, all these things that do not compound to a better lifestyle overall for yourself. All these things that just take from you, that don't build you up. And this was the best overall paradigm shift for me. And I think it's the best number one reason why everybody needs to get around more money. Reason number two, once I came back home from LA, again, this whole thing was different for me. I started thinking very differently. I remember I, I before I would try to make goals all the time. Before I went to LA for that first time, I always tried to make a goal. And I would always wonder why my goals would never come true. And I'm like, ah, oh, maybe this is how it is. Maybe, well, maybe one day I'll get lucky. I think a lot of people can relate to that. You write down a goal, you have a goal for yourself of what you want to do, yet it never comes to fruition. I started asking myself, why have I never gotten the things that I, I've wanted as a goal? Because I physically see, now I physically see proof of people having the things I've always wanted. Because before it was, because the goals I wanted before, number one, they definitely weren't big enough. Number two, nobody who I know of 
actually achieved those goals. And number three, they actually didn't really light my soul on fire. Because again, too, it, it, I, I, I wrote off everything that actually set my soul on fire that got me up and going like it did in LA. I never saw that as possible for me. How many things are you writing off as not possible for yourself just because you never experienced it? And just because you, uh, you've allowed yourself to stay in the same place, to be around the same thing, to talk to the same people, to be at the same frequencies as these people. And so when I came back to LA, the very first thing I started doing, I started writing things down. I started being with myself a lot and started writing things down in my notes. I still have notes in my phone from like 2018. I literally pulled them up like last week and literally everything I wrote on there, I'm like, holy fuck, I, I, this is pretty like, like this, this is, this is something that it was just eye opening. It, it read as somebody who was so completely locked in and driven and who knew exactly what they wanted out of life. Not some wishy-washy bullshit that you think, because most people, when they write goals, and when I used to write goals, I used to write goals thinking that, oh man, this is going to look so good. If somebody ever finds this note, it's going to look so good in front of them. I'm going to look like so self-righteous instead of actually saying whatever the fuck I want to say. Yet most people do not allow themselves to feel that way, right? Yet that is those, the selfishness and that ego is a little bit of a great driving force. I'm not telling you to be an asshole. But I do think you should go ahead and like pump yourself up and be a little bit selfish for, for yourself. Think about yourself. Do things for yourself. Put yourself first. Because everybody I saw here in LA when I first came out, they all put themselves first. They were all indulging in their own self pleasures. But there was something different by when I was writing these goals down. There was something different now that I had come back from LA. And the difference was I now believe I can get this done. And that belief, that belief never left me. Because from that day on, from that first trip, I always went ahead and tried to get into bigger rooms. I tried to get around more people who had more money than me and had better experiences of, of whether, whatever I wanted to achieve. And that brings, again, reason number two, it made me believe in the goal that I was actually trying to get for once in my life. Every single goal I had written down, I never believed in. And it was the chilling truth. I never believed in any of my goals. They're almost like wishes because I never experienced them before. Point being, I never knew anybody who made it to the MLB. I never knew anybody who played college baseball. I had these goals, but these goals were wishes. They were half-hearted because a goal is something when you write it, it's a, it's an agreement. It's done. It's a decision. It's not even a goal. It's a decision. I'm doing this. What they were before was just, man, this would be cool if this would happen. If I think about this enough, this would be cool if this actually happened in my life. It was never something physical. So when I came back from that trip and I saw the physical things, it made me realize everything I wanted can happen physically for me because you cannot have a goal that you don't believe in. And most everybody, including myself prior to that moment in time, never believed in the goal I was trying to get at, go after. So if you ever, if you're in a place where you look at your goals and you're like, why are these things not working out? You have to be honest with yourself. Do I actually believe in them? When I learned this, this changed everything for me. You have to be, I have to be brutally honest and self-aware at all fucking times, at all fucking times, because that self-awareness and brutal honesty with yourself will then lead you to the solutions of actually your, of your problems. Excuse me. I don't say I'm a hard worker. I don't say I'm the best dietitian or like I have the best discipline yet. Everybody and their mom, when I get on a call with them, Every barber wants to say, I'm the hardest worker. Whenever I hear that on a call, I'm like, oh boy, I got my work cut out for me. So total bullshit, lack of self-awareness. I am the laziest motherfucker there is. I am a fat boy at heart. Do not leave food, carrot cake, cheesecake, cookies around me. I will eat that shit up. I do not want to do cardio in the morning. I do not want to work out ever. And because I'm self-aware, because I accept that at my core, that's what I always gravitate towards. I can now set my life up for success, to avoid those things, to push me towards away from those and towards the things that will actually improve my life because none of those things improve my life whatsoever. You have to be brutally honest with yourself. That's why I will always invest in any program. I will be like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I think we do this model. Even if I have a hint of it, I'm like, yeah, I probably don't wanna do this. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the help. I don't know, I'm very ignorant. I'm very ignorant. I, I, I admit that to myself all the time. I was talking about this with my therapist just recently. Sometimes I have a tendency to go ahead and not ask questions because I don't want to look stupid in front of other people a lot of the times, whether it be in, in mentorship groups sometimes. When I get in high level groups, I kind of tend to see, stay a little bit more quiet because I don't learn. And the reason why is because I don't want to look or seem stupid, which sounds so stupid because again, too, I am ignorant. I don't know everything. 
I shouldn't know everything. So therefore, I should ask to learn, right? And I think again, too, when you start doing this practice with yourself, when you start realizing, I, when you start being brutally honest with yourself, that you just don't believe in the goal, you just never believed in the goal, you're like, great, you stop fighting this fight. I finally stopped fighting the fight with myself. Of no, I, I really believe this. I just have to believe harder. No, you don't. You don't believe it. You don't have to. The belief shouldn't be hard at all. Belief should be like non-negotiable. I know. I know. It's a knowing. It's not a belief. It's a knowing. So if you're even having a hard time believing in your goal, you need to go ahead and put yourself in a situation so you can actually believe. It. And for most, and including myself, the best practice is seeing is believing. I need to be around it. I need to see it. I need to talk. I need to touch. I need to smell it. I was going to say lick it, but I don't know the fuck that would go, right? <laughs> I'm not going to lick LA. Um, but, you know, you, you need you need to be around. I need to be around things. And, and when I know that, again, it makes my decision so much easier. I'm not going to sit here pondering, oh, is this 50K mastermind worth it? I got to experience it. Let's do it. I got to figure out truth. I don't think. I just I just went ahead and uh, uh, I'm working with two two people now. So I'm working with a TikTok uh, agency and also a YouTube agency. We're, we're building a lot of content. I'm not sitting here thinking like, oh man, should I invest in them or should I not invest in them? Maybe I should go with this guy or that guy. I'm like, fuck it, both of them. I need to find out truth. Let's go. Cause I'm ignorant. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what works yet. Let's try both of them and then see what goes with it. But you have to figure that out. You have to figure out again. Do you? You have to. Well, not figure it out. But you have to come to, to come to grips with yourself. Do I believe in my goal? Yes or no? If no, if no, and it probably isn't a no because if you if it hasn't happened, you. There is something in you where you don't believe it. Because if, if it's your work ethic, if you keep on falling off, imagine this. Why would somebody who wholeheartedly believes in their soul, this is the thing for them. Why would somebody ever fall off work ethic? You can never get lazy on something that you feel like you deserve and you can actually achieve. So you have to be able to believe it. Get around these things. Reason number three. So after I had, again, to, for after I got back from LA, I started making my plans, started actually now realizing my goals, I never actually believed in them. Now I'm actually writing down goals I believe. I'm all, you know, excited and like, there's a different aura about me now, right? I started to really act differently with the world that I was in. I started acting differently with people that I, 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 I was around. I started to notice myself starting to dislike people that I once looked up to. And I started to want to learn about people who I once thought were the enemy. What I mean by this is, is like, you know, I, I, I mean, I was like any other barber. You think that like, you have to be the community person. So you gravitate towards people who are like, especially rappers who are like community oriented, right? Who are like for the people, yeah. right? And like these nonprofit things, right? So you get around these things all the time. And I was like, oh, these people are the gods. These are the people, these are like, these are like, man, these, these are, these, they know what's going on. These are people, I want, these are my people. And then when I got back, I started noticing like, oh, hold up. These people are nothing like the people who I actually want to be around. And now it's kind of turning me off a little bit. And then I went ahead and started looking at people who I thought were the enemy. These were like business people, people making real money, right? People who were just like actually winning at life. The big, the big fish, right? The man, the man, those people. And I'm like, okay, hang on, hang on. I, I, I once thought that these people were the worst people out here, like the, fuck the government, fuck the man, all this stuff. Now I'm seeing the world from a completely different view. Now I want to learn about how do these people get their money. And I start searching, I start researching, I start looking into these things. Oh, man, whoa. And I, then I start learning, okay, cool. Everybody, everybody in business has a very different mindset. And so reason number three, why you need to be around money more often, especially as a barber, it, it's going to make your relationship with people who have money or just money in general not the enemy anymore, but as someone and something to learn and learn from. Because everything prior up until that moment, I thought money was evil. Oh, we're all gonna die anyways. What is it ever, no matter how much money you make, you're all gonna die anyways. I was that motherfucker. But when I started coming back from, when I came back from LA and started having these goals, started interacting with the world, I realized, you know, I can't make money while having a poor relationship with it. Cause it started to make sense. I was like, man, I, like I started learning things about money. Started learning things about people who made money. I'm like, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's all That's all they did? That makes so much sense. This is how business is? Oh man, that makes so much sense now. Whereas before I was so blocked off, I was so just like, no, 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 fuck that, uh, crosses, fuck all you, fuck the man, give give, give everybody their money, Ta tax the rich, all this shit, right? And I was like, whoa, hold on, these people are providing jobs for millions of people. These people are providing value, pushing the world forward. 
Why would, why would I want to like discredit them and also take money away from them? Keep fucking going. You're making the world a better place. Why would I want to take money out of your hand that's incentivizing you to keep on pushing and doing things I have no clue how to do yet? And then it came back to me. I'm like, whoa, hold up. This is how my business works, right? I need to be incentivized because I'm not incentivized at all as a barber. I'm making, I'm making 16, 20 bucks a cut. I hate my job. I hate cutting hair. This shit's terrible. It's just ass. And it started to click for me. I was like, oh, fuck. Okay, I got to get this thing going now. I really have to get around more money. And I have to start cutting out. Now I have to start, like, and because it allows me to build a better belief, a more deeply rooted belief in myself. How can I pick their brain? What can I learn? What interview? What can I read from them, right? I started getting really obsessive over this. And again, so you cannot make money while having a poor relationship with it. Because I thought, oh man, but the banks, oh man, fuck them. I don't want anybody to do the FDIC insures, insures every single individual, no matter what bank in the United States of America, up to $250,000 inside of that, inside of a bank. They insure, the federal government insures you up to $250,000. Unless you have $250,000, you are fine. Your little 10K is not going to get taken away. In fact, your 10K has a better chance of getting stolen because it's under your, under your bed or in the closet right now from a break-in than it is from the government because the government, they'll just give it right back to you, all right? The, the federal government. Oh man, I got to invest in stocks. 10K, really? What are you going to do waiting on 10K for? Ah, oh, but over like 20 years, you really want to be doing this for 20 years. You really want to wait on 10K to really have compounding interest after 10 years. You have to fix the, the poor mentality with money is the reason why you are not making money. You are waiting on money to come to you when you have to go and get and create money. And that requires you to go learn things. That requires you to go ahead and improve your business. It requires you to now put your foot, your right foot forward and then put your left foot forward and start taking steps in the right direction. And that trip to LA, that one trip opened my mind up to everything possible for me. And I think every single barber needs to be able to have that moment for them. I really want to go ahead and share more of these stories as well, too. I post a lot of these on like YouTube shorts as well, TikTok. Make sure you go ahead and also watch the YouTube channel. I'm going to be posting on there much more often at Lux. Because again, too, I think this is so much more important for everybody as a barber. No barber, if we look at all barbers, no barber has a great relationship with money. Some barbers have decent relationships. They don't know how to save money. They don't know how to make and, and double and triple their money. They don't know how to get out of the barber industry. They think very small still. It's because again, too, you think of people with money as the enemy. When in fact, people with money are the ones you should be looking up to not people who are broke. Because again, too, if you want to get ahead and we are living in the United States of America where capitalism is alive and well. And if you want to live in America, you have to play the game. You have to play the game. I'm just, yeah, no matter how much that hurts you to, to believe, you have to play the game. Because if you don't, nobody's going to save you. Because if you don't, you're going to look like another dumbass out here who's going to be saying, I deserve my money. Why? Because I work hard and you sit on your ass just saying that you deserve something. Why would you deserve something? Because I'm willing to bet too, think about this. If that was you in the position that had all that money, you would think the same damn reason. And if you if you if you're saying no, I would want to take care of everybody, then I want I welcome you to work as hard to get to the point where you have millions and billions of dollars and give it all away and have nothing for yourself and live in the same house. I would always do that. You say that now because you, and, but if you, because you say that now is the reason why you will never get to that point. Everybody who says that shit will never get to that point because you have to have a good relationship with money make, to make money. You will not have a poor relationship with money become wealthy. You have to start changing the way you think overall. I think every single barber, this should be number one for yourself. Get a better relationship with money. If you felt this podcast valuable, make sure you guys share this with one friend. Also make sure if you actually really fuck with this, you want me to uh, make more po uh, podcasts like this, go ahead and take a screenshot of this uh, and post it on your uh, story. Make sure you guys tag me as well too. I'll see you guys next time.